Welcome to another edition of the Sunday Drive. The Sunday Drive is sponsored by Midtown Mattress in downtown Lindsay. They have so much more than just mattresses. They have home decor, they have furniture, they have bedding, and of course they have mattresses. So next time you're in Lindsay, check them out. Today we are going to be speaking with Kathleen Seymour, and you probably know her as a former counselor, as a very successful business owner in Bob Cajun. She owns El Patio and um, the Kawartha Coffee Company, mm -hmm. but she has so many other things going on in her life, and she has such a unique and interesting past, so we're going to talk to her about all of that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this edition of The Sunday Drive. Hi everybody, welcome back. We are with Kathleen Seymour. Hi, thanks so much for doing this. I've been wanting to get you into my vehicle for a Sunday drive for so long, so I'm really happy that you're here. Well, thank you. Um, where do you want to start? Because you have such a, a varied um, past mm -hmm. and you've done so many different things. Let's talk, let's go right back to um, before you came to Bob Cajun full time, yeah. before you opened your business, you managed some pretty cool bands. Yes. So um, I went to school for recording arts management uh, in Toronto back in the 90s. And through that, I ended up working with some of the Canadian bands were Honeyman Suite, Glass Tiger, 5440. All so, my favorites. <laughs> so I learned a lot then and started working with some international bands. And uh, then ended up working doing club openings and um, restaurant launches and kind of the total arts arts background out of Toronto and then ended up getting married moving to Minneapolis and what did yes. you do there well the music scene wasn't quite the same so I then went back to school and retrained as a shiatsu therapist <laughs> wow yeah and so you did you work in Minneapolis doing yes that? yes I did yeah we had a clinic in Minneapolis so I did uh, shiatsu and echelon massage, and I had some people working for me, and that became very successful. So then when you came back to Canada, you opened uh, the restaurant, right, here in Bob mm -hmm. Cajun, um, the coffee company, Kawartha Coffee Company. I remember when you first opened, you were over um, behind the old school house, yes. right? Um, so tell me a little bit more about how that developed. So um, I was in Mexico City uh, visiting friends of ours, and we were in the, in the central square in Zocalo, and there was a huge protests going on and what it was was coffee farmers protesting fair prices so I went down to find out exactly what it was and my friend was a, um, a journalist actually for Reuters so he found out what it, what they were talking about and I thought well hmm what can I do back in Bob Cajun that can maybe help them so I thought well maybe time to open a coffee shop because there wasn't anything there was no coffee shop in in anywhere around here I, I don't Tim Hortons, there was, there was not much. Yeah. So I decided to do fair trade, organic, direct trade coffee from Mexico is what we started with. And we built that. That was a garage, the space. Mm -hmm. um, we built it out. Um, so then we had a put a big Moroccan party room in the back. And and yeah. you seem to have that theme kind of throughout your life, right? The um, Moroccan, Mexican, that's something that you seem drawn to. Yeah, it's um I, I don't know. I've I've always felt like that as well. Um I took belly dancing for years. I, no. I loved, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Um yeah, that was fun. And I don't know it's an affinity, it's it's a cultural thing. I think Morocco and the Moorish design and style is so beautiful and mm -hmm. the music. Um and then Mexican again, it's it's the music, it's the culture, it's is the vibrancy. I think it's the vibrancy of, of life. And they enjoy life. It's a vitality. And I think it's really important for people to enjoy life. Oh, I had the one at the schoolhouse. Then I bought um, a building across from oh, where right. I currently am. I forgot I, about that move. I loved I, that building. <laughs> where I currently am. Yeah, it was a beautiful old building. And we had two floors. And again, it was like a little eclectic mix of Mexican, a little bit Moorish too little bit Moroccan and Canadian uh, and then the opportunity opportunity came up to move across the street with the big patio and I knew that originally when I was a cottager here when it was the doctor's office um, and it was a really busy restaurant bar that people would go to as they were cottaging and all the locals 
So I thought, well, maybe I'll have a look and take over that for a bit. And here we are. So you own yes. you own a business in the city of Kawartha Lakes, and and that was kind of the uh, what was behind your yeah. making a decision to run for council. Yes, it was a catalyst because I had to deal with planning years ago, not the current planning that we have right now. Um, and there were issues, and it took me a long time. And actually, the doctor thought that I could have had an MS. She didn't know what was going on because I had all sorts of strange symptoms. In the end, we found out it was um, was basically stress. Uh, and I know that a lot of people had been going through this with different departments. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to see what I can do to make it better, make it easier. So I decided to run for council. <laughs> and that added to your stress? It added to my stress. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, you know what they say, they always say, if you want to change something, become involved, right? Which yeah. is great. And that's what you did. And you ha made a lot of great changes for the city and for mm -hmm. the people of Bob Cajun. But you also put up with a lot of um, negativity and I would say hatred from um, people yes. online. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do not know why people think that they can attack people for doing their job and they don't even know the full story they just make assumptions and their assumptions are incorrect and instead of speaking to someone or having dialogue they don't they would just immediately go online and and basically lie it, lots of lies lots of rumors um i think people should find something to do honestly maybe they need to volunteer right? yeah they yeah. need to volunteer they need to do things instead of worrying about what other people are doing so we're just going for a drive and we're heading past Beach Park in Bob Cajun and that was one of your projects as a uh, councillor, right? And it's yes. pretty much done now. It looks great. Yes. Um, so that project was started, I would say, seven years ago. Well, yeah, eight years I was on council and I think it was the first or second year of council where we had the trailer parks move out. There were many, many delays um, due to situation beyond uh, the municipality's control. You know, from COVID to contractors to Prince Evern. Prince Evern, absolutely, with permitting, um, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, um, it is now almost complete. I know that they, uh, trees have been going in, barriers have been going up, uh, and uh, the docking needs to go in. So one other thing I wanted to talk about with you is um, you are adopted. Yes. And you recently, in the last few years, found your birth family. Yes. Tell me about that process and what prompted it. So, actually what prompted it was many, many years ago when the doctor thought I had MS, she wrote a letter to the, I think it's Toronto Children's Aid, uh, to open up my birth records to, so I could find out some history. Well didn't end up doing that but I found other pathways to um, you know to sign up for different things because really I was concerned about more the um, genetics yeah, some and sort of genetic genetics yeah because I my family amazing like I couldn't have had a better family that adopted me here I grew up in Toronto great life cottage here fantastic um, and then I uh, decided to go on 23 and me for the exact same reason uh, 2019 December I got a call from someone or a message to call or one or the other and he said I think I'm your cousin wow. and he said I think you need to talk to my mom and I was like whoa okay so the woman called me and she said yeah I think I know who you are and she was calling from England she was Irish and I, I was like okay and she said you are um, I think my brother Danny Fagan's daughter and I was like excuse me because my married name is Fagan right <laughs> and she said Danny Fagan is my brother and he lives in Dublin and uh, yeah I think you're his daughter and I was like what so then backtracked you know a little bit and so yes that's what we figured she gave me the numbers from my parents uh, told me all about them that they were together they got back together afterwards I have a full brother and sister I have nieces and nephews wow. yeah it was amazing and anyhow, I was going to, uh, in February uh, 2020, I was going to Morocco and Spain and Gibraltar and England. And uh, I'm in Marrakesh in the souk, walking down the street and it's all crazy. It's dusk and there's like camels and people and smoke everywhere. And I get a call and it was a British number and I picked it up. I thought it was my business partner. Uh, and she said, Kathleen, um, this is your mother, Helen. I was like, what? 
She said, I heard you're coming to London and we'd like to come and meet you. So wow. anyhow, I guess two or three weeks later, by the time we made it to London, uh, yeah, I met my first, my mom and dad, and then my brother and sister flew over from Ireland too. Do you feel like it filled a void? Yes, um, being adopted, it there was always something missing. I, I couldn't really put my finger on it. There was always something, and I was very independent, and I did all sorts of things. I traveled all over. I did we know business stuff. <laughs> yeah, very very independent and very um, almost uh, hyper independent. So I didn't need anybody. I'd make my own way. So I realized now that that might have been part of being adopted. So I, I felt I had to take care of myself. So yeah, it, it just, it kind of, I don't know, it just, it gave closure. And now I have two amazing families. How lucky are you? I couldn't be more lucky, I know. <laughs>